10,000 years ago, all the continents of Azeroth were as one. And it is said that all the rivers in the world flowed to one magical place. This was the ancient empire of Pandaria, nestled in the most fertile of river valleys at the far end of the world. Behold, the last emperor on the day of his coronation. His name was Xiao Hao. Yang Xiao Hao was born to be emperor and wanted for nothing. The wealth of the great Pandaren Empire was his to command. All Pandaren emperors begin their reign by consulting with the great Jinyu elders. It was said that the Jinyu could talk to the rivers, that they could hear whispers of the future in the rippling waves. The great water speaker closed his eyes and listened to the rivers. He listened for the emperor's long life and prosperous realm, but he heard something else entirely. The wise old Jinyu saw a far away land, a kingdom of elves grown bold in their arrogance. He saw a pit of fire, a great maw opening upon countless horrors. Numberless demons were about to pour forth onto Azeroth, rending the land, corrupting all they touched. Even if the demons were defeated, the world would be forever broken, the continents forever shattered. Emperor Xiao Hao watched in disbelief as the Jinyu water speaker reeled from the terror of his vision. What did you see? Xiao Hao asked. Long life? Prosperous realm? But the future held neither for the last emperor of the Pandaren. No, young Xiao Hao could not rest on the riches of his empire. If he was to save his land and his people, he would be called to do something great. He would embark on an epic journey. He would sacrifice all that he was. This is his story. of the Sundering weighed heavily on Emperor Xiao Hao. Cold and alone, he ascended Mount Neverest, seeking wisdom from the Jade Serpent. What troubles you, young Emperor? The Spirit of Wisdom asked. Xiao Hao replied, Countless demons will soon pour over Azeroth. What must I do to save my kingdom? The Jade Serpent answered, Seek out the heart of Pandaria, for the answer lies within. But how can I find it? The Emperor protested. Your emotions cloud you, said the Serpent. Free yourself of these burdens. Let the land be your teacher. But the Emperor did not understand. He sulked back to his home in the Jade Forest. As he traveled, he commiserated with his old friend, the Monkey King. 
I was to have a long life, a prosperous realm, the Emperor cried. I cannot do this. Relax, said the Monkey King. We are in this together. As he spoke, the four winds began to howl. A great gust blew the Monkey King away. The Monkey King laughed and called out above the rowing storm, Sorry, you can't fight fate. The Emperor cried out for his friend. No, wait. I cannot do this alone. And in that moment, all of Xiaohao's uncertainty was manifest in a terrible dark energy, a shah of doubt. The more the Emperor struggled, the more he weakened. The Shah would surely overtake him. Then, Xiao Hao remembered the wisdom of the Jade Serpent, and he looked to the land for answers. Nearby, the bamboo of the Jade Forest was also threatened. The reeds that stood rigid against the gale broke under its force. But the reeds that bent with the wind endured the storm and prospered in the rain. Xiao Hao realized the lesson of the reed. And when he turned his back to the Shah, suddenly all his doubts vanished. He knew he could be more than just emperor. The four winds carried the Laughing Monkey King over the valley and through the wilds. The Emperor's faith led him onward to save his friend and to stop the terrible sundering the water speaker had foreseen. Emperor Xiao Hao, free of doubt, pursued his friend, the Monkey King. With the wind at his back, Xiao Hao ran. But in his haste, the Emperor stumbled into the dense and untamed swamps of the Krasarang Wilds. The Emperor cried out. He fought to free himself, but only sank further. The more the Emperor worried, the deeper he sank. His worries had taken form, the shore of despair. Xiao Hao cried out, Help! Far above, the majestic red crane of hope soared. Why do you struggle so? The crane asked. I have lost my friend, my kingdom, Xiao Hao cried. It is hopeless. Your friend is not lost, the crane replied. You are. Again, Xiao Hao looked to Pandaria for the answer. He saw the great tree growing in the middle of the swamp. The branches reached for the heavens, but its roots stretched deep into the earth. Xiao Hao's feet found purchase. With hope in his heart, the emperor reached upward and the grip of despair loosened. I must never forget who I am, he said. I am the Emperor, and I will save this land. Xiao Hao could 
could hear the Monkey King's laughter on the wind. But it came from the west, beyond the serpent's spine wall. This was the land of the Mantid, mortal enemy of all Pandaren. I cannot do this, Xiao Hao decided. Trembling, the Emperor turned to leave. Where are you going? asked a voice. I'm afraid to go on, said the Emperor. Looking into the wastes, he saw a great black ox. Just follow your feet, the black ox said. They will know the way. Xiao Hao descended the wall and crept through the strange realm. To the Emperor, it was a waking nightmare. But his feet led the way. Soon, he heard a dreadful sound. Three vile mantid warriors argued how they would split up and devour their prize. The Monkey King! Xiao Hao was paralyzed with terror. The insidious Shah of Fear held him in place. The voice of the ox came to Xiao Hao saying, You must not let your fear control you, my emperor. You must control your fear. Xiao Hao looked once again to the land for answers. The great Kaipari trees of the town long steps were legendary for their sap. In one bead of amber, Xiao Hao found his answer. I will not be paralyzed by fear, the emperor proclaimed. Xiao Hao hurled his weight against the nearest tree, and giant globs of sap rained down from above. And now it was the mantid who were held fast as they struggled against the sap. The emperor had saved his friend. As they fled, the Monkey King was overwhelmed by doubt. Emperor, we cannot do this alone, he cried. You should create an army to crush the Mantid once and for all. Free of his doubts and master of his fears, the Emperor was more confident than ever. No, said Xiao Hao. The storm that burns the sky comes for the Mantid as well. We need an army to crush a legion. The last emperor of Pandaria faced a terrible fortune. A burning legion set to tear the world asunder. He had cast away his doubt, despair, and fear. Now, confidence brimming, he would build an army. High atop the peaks of Kunlai Summit, the 100 greatest warriors of Pandaria perfected their arts under the watchful eye of the White Tiger, the spirit of strength. I need an army, Xiao Hao announced. I have come for my warriors. But the White Tiger recognized the great darkness within the Brash Emperor. Why do you fight? The Tiger asked. Xiao Hao bristled. To destroy demon hordes, to crush those who oppose me. No, that is no reason to fight, the Tiger said. You are indeed fearless, but 
Still, you are burdened. The Emperor scoffed, so the White Tiger issued a challenge. Take this staff, and if you can touch any one of my warriors, they are yours to command. Spurred on by the howls of the Monkey King, the Emperor spun about, thrusting and swinging the staff. But the warriors easily dodged his every blow. Furious, Shao Hao roared. The sum of all his rage, the Shah of Anger burst forth. The Emperor fumed and broke the staff over his knee. Violence and hatred erupted. You see now why you are not ready to lead? The White Tiger proclaimed. Your anger does not empower you. It makes you weak. Defenseless, Xiao Hao faced the darkness he had created. As one, the Shah struck out. But as the smoke cleared, the Emperor stood unharmed. The shape of a mighty warrior lay broken at his feet. A warrior who had paid the ultimate price to save his emperor. Xiao Hao's heart swelled as he knelt humbly before the white tiger. My rage exacted a heavy toll, the emperor said. A single sacrifice has shown me the power of fellowship, of love, of peace. The white tiger nodded. Again, I ask, why do you fight? For home and family, Xiao Hao replied. For the people, I protect. For them, I would give my final breath. Thank you, White Tiger. Relieved at last of all his burdens, the Emperor rose. Come, Monkey King. We must go to the heart of Pandaria before all is lost. As the Emperor and his friends set out, the skies grew black, for the time of the Sundering had come. And so Xiao Hao came to the heart of the land, the sacred veil within the center of his empire. Purged of all his burdens, the emperor radiated enlightenment. the veil, his people huddled for shelter. They knew that the end of the world had come, and they cried out for the Emperor to save them. People of Pandaria, Xiao Hao declared, stay calm, focus your minds, and together we will make it through this. But his people did not understand. As Xiao Hao gazed upon their faces, he saw the burdens that he had overcome. He recognized doubt and despair. He saw his people frozen in fear or trembling with anger. 
and he knew that they had little time to learn what he had learned. Time. My people need time, the Emperor realized. And in that moment, the Emperor recalled the lesson of the Jade Serpent. Seek out the heart of Pandaria, for the answer lies within. As Xiao Hao reflected on his journey, he looked to the land and saw a single blossom in the wind. No matter the burdens I faced, he thought, the land provided guidance. But the truest answers always came from within. And then it became clear. I was to have a long life and a prosperous realm. But I am more than just emperor. I now know what I must do. For I am the heart of Pandaria. People of Pandaria, Xiao Hao proclaimed, you are not yet ready to face the storm that comes for you. And I cannot stop it. But you will weather this storm and many more. For I will give you the time to learn the lessons that I have learned. And then, the last Emperor of Pandaria sacrificed all that he was and all that he would be and gave his final breath to become one with the land. A dense mist surrounded and protected his empire. And while the rest of the world broke apart in the fury of the sundering, Pandaria set itself free, hidden by the Emperor's breath. It drifted out to sea like a blossom on the wind. The trees in the Vale have never stopped blossoming. And in time, we Pandaren learned to live as our Emperor lived. His lessons endure in the temples of his land. And from the snowy peaks of Kun Lai Summit, he watches over us. And it is said that if we listen very closely, he speaks to us still through the mists. These are the Emperor's gifts to us. And this is Pandaria. Oh.